very long time. We're talking about an exchange. We're talking about adding, setting the poverty rate at 400%, which is going to mean about 75% of the population in the state of Arkansas would qualify for Medicaid that would be on this program. That would be on this program. We've already got 750,000 people on Medicaid right now. So we're talking about a huge, huge amount. Are we setting up, which leaves, in my mind, a very small number of people who would be just plain old citizens who would be able to, like you, who would be able to qualify basically for an exchange. Are we saying that the Medicaid patients, what we're going to do is change the Medicaid system so that people go on this exchange, find out what their income is from the IRS and whether or not they qualify for a subsidy, and then they would choose whatever kind of insurance met best meets their needs. That's everybody on Medicaid. Well, that's that's okay. it's like one piece um, that may have been confusing. The Medicaid eligibility will be up to 139% of the poverty level. So everybody under 139 will be Medicaid. Above 138, so 139 to 400% would be eligible for a sliding scale subsidy and a discount. So the closer you are to that 400% of poverty, the less subsidy you would get. But it's to make the premiums affordable. And it's estimated taking everybody between that 139 and 400 percent, the average subsidy would be 5,000 a year for someone. So those would all be on the private plans. Um, they would get a subsidy as long as their income did not, it, it, there's a formula. So even in Arkansas at 400 percent, if the cost of the premium was low, they may not get a subsidy, but nobody over that 400. So they're not on Medicaid. That's that's one. Um, we do have a little bit of a concern about people moving between Medicaid and the private plans and how to not have access and coverage and how to keep uh, people covered in with their same provider networks and are working really closely um, on that with Medicaid because right now, except for when you're pregnant or something, the the cutoff is like 17%, so there will be more people on Medicaid, but there will be many more um, not on Medicaid. So like I said, on the, just the first year it's estimated that less than half will be new Medicaid, more than half will be new to the private group. So when you fill out the application form, when people fill out the application form, and it puts their name and address and all that in their income, and then it goes to the IRS. And the IRS determines whether, where their eligibility is, whether they're eligible for a subsidy or straight Medicaid or whatever the case may be. And the other thing that concerned me about what you had to say about the federal portal, why would this stuff have to go to the Department of Homeland Security? Because only legal residents are eligible. You cannot get the subsidies or even purchase through the exchange if you're not a legal resident. And so, that has to be determined by Homeland Security. So this really, in my mind, is not the same at all as going out and buying automobile insurance. Where you go online, you say where you live, you talk about what kind of car you have, do you have a bad driving record? And we call they call the insurance company, the insurance commissioner or the commission and find out whether or not. I mean, this is so far removed from what I would call the ability to go out and just choose something. Um, when you have the federal government so tied into to everything, who makes this determination then if somebody has a job and they're not on unemployment anymore, they have a job, how their income level changes and whether or not they have a subsidy and what kind of insurance they ought to be able to have. And, I mean, I, I, it is complex and that is one of the things that we're working really hard at. First, let me assure you on the security and that remember now with no pre-existing conditions, your health information doesn't go in here, but your income does and it's protected by IRS. They're very concerned about that and they are the ones that confirm it. So 
somebody says what their income is, it goes to the federal hub that takes it to IRS to verify and say, yes, that, that's right for this person. Of course, that's based on last year's tax returns. And it goes back then to the consumer and it says, this is what we have, this is right. And if they say, well, no, you know, I've changed or I'm, I have a different job, I make more, I make less, I'm unemployed, then we would have to connect to the state wage for current. Medicaid is run on current, the exchange is run on your last tax credit or, or tax. But it's a, what's called a MAGI, so they allow more than your tax, your um, modified adjusted gross income would include any interest or, or it's a higher threshold. So um, it would check to see what your IRS was. A lot of people don't file taxes and then it would go back to a local wage statement in, the, in Arkansas. So what happens then for those people who don't pay taxes, don't file taxes, and if the present law, federal law, says what it is, and that folks would have to pay a penalty if they don't have insurance, I mean, so much government, I don't, I, how do you go back and, and check those things? This, this makes this exchange more than an exchange of just going out and buying insurance for your car, or health insurance, or um, for your family. I mean, it, it's so much more complicated than um, and that. I, and I wonder and about people to not have to not pay in what they own, or have to pay back so much when they're low income already. So we need to get it right on the front end. That's a lot of what has to go into to planning to get it right. It was complicated. So I guess my question is about what, who are we planning for here? That, that really gets to be, in my, my mind, are we planning for a whole lot of additional Medicaid people? Or are we planning for additional folks who are sitting in the well, yeah. legislators under this program who could qualify for the Medicaid? We're, we're paying for no income plan. primarily. Medicaid will now, more than today, pay for low wage earners because minimum wage earners may not make 139% of poverty and they would become Medicaid eligible. Otherwise, we're looking at higher wage earners. I mean, you've probably heard a lot that family of four, 400% is $89,400. But the average insurance premium may be unaffordable for that family. So we're looking for a plan where people can access coverage because really, frankly, we're all paying for those who don't have it now. And so this, is, this will be a way that all of our rights lower. Might I, uh, Thank you. This really, Turn your microphone on. This really, I mean, that, that is a, she's exactly right, and that is a very complex scenario, and we don't need for it to go in the face. All those questions and all that involvement with our people. See, so that, we're not in control of, save ourselves not in control of those provisions. Right. See? And so, uh, and, and I'm not. I'm not the best salesman for affordable health care. I'm, I'm not. But I'm not in control of that either. But those those uh, provisions will prevail if it stays intact, no matter who has to change. It'll be there. And so, when you call, when you have a problem, and there there'll be plenty of them. You know, we got to have somebody here that can help you. That's what. That's the bottom line of this thing. And, and if it all goes away, it goes away. Okay, that's fine. So, uh, but all these, uh, you know, it's a, it's a work in progress. We don't have the rules and regs yet. We won't have them off for months and months and months. But what we're talking about here is at least have someone you can get to here when all these questions come up on this stuff. Uh, good question, Representative. Unless you don't. Next, do you have another one? No, that's it. Thank you. Next, we